money traditionally in the West is gold and silver. Now it could be other things that people will object. Well, some cultures have used shark's teeth or or bags of wheat or big stone wheels. You know, that's true, but nobody does anymore. And by and large, those were limited to particular circumstances for good reasons. People value those things. There's the issue. People place value on things. As long as everybody around you values something, it can serve as money. If enough people value it and want it and demand it, you can use DVDs as money if you like. You can use heroin as money if you like, if enough people value it. But traditionally, historically, and with a good biblical precedent, most people in most times have valued gold and silver. It's rare, it's in demand, it's transportable, it's divisible, at least by making various size coins out of it. Now, this being so, the federal government, the national government, can't create money. They can create things and call them money. When they do that, we use the expression fiat money. Fiat's an old Latin word. It means let there be. Uh, in the Latin form of the, of the Old Testament, when God said, let there be light, the Latin is fiat lux, let there be light. Well, now the government says fiat box, let there be money. But it's not really money, it's something that's called money, and they want us to believe it's money, and a lot of people believe it's money, and act as if it were. And as long as a lot of people are acting as if it is, it'll work for a while, it may work for a very long time, especially if they don't keep producing more and more and more of it. And that's the second problem. Because you see, the federal government, any government, needs money to operate. There are basically two ways the federal government, or any government, can get money. One, they can tax their people. We don't like that. At least we don't like it if we're included in the tax. It's fine if they, if they want to tax you, we are all for that. If they're taxing me, I'm not so hot about that. Taxes have their limits because sooner or later, you, you hit, the, you, you go past the 40, 50 percent level of taxation. Most people, at least most Americans, still probably would not be happy. And so there's a second way to get money to operate. You can inflate the currency. You can make money, declare that there's money, make it out of nothing. Fiat money. This is inflation. You inflate the currency with money that you have decreed into existence by sovereign state power, and then you tell everybody they've got to use it, and they've got to trust it, they've got to believe it's money, and they've got to act as if it's money. And so you now have more money to work with. But what's happening, as is the case in all of the scenarios we've been talking about, is that you have more apparent money chasing the same number of fixed goods. There's been no real increase in wealth. And so the prices on those goods is bid up. Prices rise. And so therefore, though you have not taxed me and taken my money directly, you have rendered my money less valuable. But the effect is the same. I now have, effectively, less buying power than I used to. You've taken my buying power from me, and you've done it dishonestly. Rather than come and say, we're the state, we're doing this service, you have to pay for it, you pretend that you can make money out of nothing and you take away something that's not yours to take.